In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. Good morning to you all. Welcome to our Eucharist this morning, and welcome to those joining us online as well. We offer our Eucharist today to the praise and glory of Almighty God, and with special intention for our Parish Mother's Union branch, for the officers and all the members. And we pray that we may soon be able to meet together in person as a Mother's Union branch. <coughs> Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My friends, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past. Lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. I feel a divine jealousy for you, for I promised you in marriage to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by its cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you submit to it readily enough. I think that I am not in the least inferior to these super apostles, I may be untrained in speech, but not in knowledge. Certainly in every way and in all things we have made this evident to you. Did I commit a sin by humbling myself so that you might be exalted, because I proclaimed God's good news to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in need, I did not burden anyone, for my needs were supplied by the friends who came from Macedonia. So I refrained, and will continue to refrain, from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boast of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, The works of God are truth and justice. The works of God are truth and justice. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. The works of God are truth and justice. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures for ever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The works of God are truth and justice. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of God are truth and justice. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast for ever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. The works of God are truth and justice. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant for ever. Holy and awesome is his name. The works of God are truth and justice. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures for ever. The works of God are truth and justice. The Lord be on my heart and on my lips, and I worthy proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I think that I have probably mentioned to you before one of the uh, little hobbies I picked up during the lockdown was getting into my family history. And one of the things I like about family history research is playing the detective and trying to find out what went on in generations past and piecing together uh, a puzzle which perhaps has been there and then you discover actually the answers to it. And as an illustration of this, one particular piece of detective work I was particularly proud of recently um, was unearthing the story behind my father's father. Now, my father's father was a bit of a cad by all accounts, and I knew that he had left my father and his mother when my dad was about 10 years old, uh, round about 1951. That's giving his age away, but never mind. And uh, later on in my family history researches, I found that my grandfather and grandmother divorced in 1971. And I was thinking, why did it take 20 years? He left in 51, took them 20 years to get divorced. And then I found, by doing some more research, that my grandfather then married again in, guess when, 1971. So that was the reason why he wanted the divorce. Obviously, it was a little bit of detective work, and I was finding out pieces of a puzzle I didn't previously know existed. 
And we can do this when we read the Bible. We can discover things about what happened in the past. We can play the detective. And this is particularly true in Paul's letters. And we heard today from 2 Corinthians. And particularly in 2 Corinthians, Paul is presenting his side of the argument against the people who were criticising him. Because we know he faced lots of opposition uh, from certain factions in the church in Corinth. And by looking at his writings, we can play the detective. We can piece together what the criticism was or what the problems were, which we wouldn't otherwise have known if it was not for Paul's writings. And in this particular passage, he talks about his fear that the Corinthians will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. He says this, for if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus, or if you receive a different spirit or a different gospel, for if someone comes, we can assume then, this is us playing detective, that someone has come and has presented a different message of Christianity to the proper one that Paul had presented to them, a different Jesus, a different spirit, a different gospel. We can assume this is what actually happened. And he goes on. I think I am not in the least inferior to these super apostles. These super apostles then were the ones coming in and giving the different message. Paul calls them super apostles because they regarded themselves as better than him. And he goes on. I may be untrained in speech, but not in knowledge. We can infer from this that these super apostles then were good at public speaking and won over the Corinthians with their alternative message. Paul says, I'm not so good at speaking, but I have the knowledge. I have the true message. This is us piecing together the puzzle of what's going on in Corinth. And then the next part, where he talks about the fact that I did not burden anyone, for my needs were supplied from the friends who came from Macedonia. Again, another criticism, perhaps from the Corinthians, was that Paul was being paid for, his expenses were being paid for, by other churches, not by the Corinthians. So perhaps they thought, ah, well, he's in the pocket of the other churches. And we can put all these pieces together and see the problems that existed then. What can it say to us today? It reminds us that problems always exist in the church. Uh, there can be competing versions of the Christian faith. And it reminds us too not to be um, won over by a message that seems appealing, that is attractive on the surface, that is glitzy and glamorous, but might be at odds with the true message, which might not be so flashy, might not be uh, quite so appealing on the face of it, might seem quite ordinary in its delivery, but it is the true message, such as the message that Paul was trying to give to the Corinthians. And the essence of the true message of Christianity, of course, is summed up for us in the Lord's Prayer, which we hear Jesus give to the apostles in the Gospel reading. The Lord's Prayer is not complicated, is not flashy, is not glamorous. It is simple and direct, but it contains the true message of our faith. Simply that we look for the coming of God's kingdom. We ask that his kingdom may come on earth. And it is about forgiveness. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. It is about reaching out to others in humility. It is about forgiveness. It is about not always getting our own way, but about seeing the best in others. This is the essence of the Christian faith. And if we stick to the essence of the Lord's Prayer, and this is why we say it so often, because it contains the truth of the Gospel, that we are faithful to our prayers, to saying the Lord's Prayer, then we will keep true to the proper message of the Christian faith, the message preached by Paul 
the message given to us by Jesus, the message which the church has sought to proclaim in every generation, which we try and proclaim to those around us today. Amen. Gwedhiwn, let us pray. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you've promised to hear us when we pray to you in faith. We give you thanks that you have called us to be part of your church and we ask that you would help us to be faithful to the true message of the gospel. Within the worldwide church today, we are asked to pray for the Diocese of Chattisgarh in India, for their Bishop Robert, their clergy and their people. We pray for June, our Bishop, the clergy and people of this diocese. And today we are asked to pray for the rectorial benefice of Whitchurch, ministry area, for the ministry area leader, John Davis, the lay chair, Andrew Edgar, and all the people there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, and we pray for that spirit of forgiveness, as contained in the Lord's Prayer, that wherever there is conflict, in our world, there may be peace. We pray for all who have been forced to flee from their homes because of conflict and become refugees, all those living in refugee camps around the world. We also hold before you the Middle East and pray for peace there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own parish. And today we remember all those who live in Bronkunnen Terrace and Blind Wern. Also pray for the officers and members of our Parish Mothers Union branch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you all those who are in any kind of need at this time, especially those who are ill in hospital, or in care homes, or in hospices. And we commend to your loving care all those who have gone before us in this life. And among the recently departed, we pray especially for Arthur Richards, Betty Pucky, Anne Doreen Kay, and Brian Harris. And also for those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time, especially Stan Nicholas, Emily Andrews and David James Phillips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So far the rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Luke and all your saints. We commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body on the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
what the mind and complete of Christ to humble itself to your own humanity. Lord, cleanse me from my sin and wash me. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Lord, be pleased to accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal Word. Through him you created the universe and formed us men and women in your own image. You sent him to be our Saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Through him you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise, and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which he shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God. <laughs> You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. Grant that these gifts of your body and blood may cleanse me from my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful always to your teaching and let me never be parted from you. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Diolch ych i'r argloedd o herwydd graslon wedd. Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up on the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.